What's up guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey and every once in a while I'll throw in other whiskey related content. Today we're going to be doing a list. I want to go over seven great limited edition expressions that you should try. Stick around. All right, so it's a list today. We're going over seven limited edition whiskeys that are worth grabbing. Now, of course, this list by its very nature is going to be incomplete. There are countless limited edition whiskeys out there. And oftentimes that's just because the distillery isn't able to produce enough of the whiskey. Other times it's just a marketing ploy, but it's one that works. And don't worry, I'm not about to go off on some cynical rant about whiskey marketing. I could, I won't. Uh, in fact, it's the opposite. I'm here to celebrate these bottles. These are good whiskeys. And again, whiskeys I think that are worth trying. Now, heads up, I'm only going to be covering OBs here, which means bottles put out by the brand. I won't be covering stuff like IBs or independent bottles. These whiskeys might be single cask. They could be batch releases. They could be annual releases. They might be one-offs, whatever. The point is, if it's been put out by the brand, if it's not a continuous release and it's good, that's all I need. Of course, these rules are totally arbitrary and made up, but we need rules. We live in a society. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to find all or even most of the whiskeys on this list, but hopefully you'll be able to find one or two if you're so inclined. I did set up the list to include some relatively accessible whiskeys, so I do hope they're not all unicorns, but of course that's going to depend on your market. Now, these kind of lists are fun because you can basically make them over and over again. As I mentioned earlier, limited releases are almost endless and there's a bunch out there that I think are worthwhile. So I will be putting out lists like this every so often just to keep you guys updated on all the good ones that I've come across. Obviously, I haven't tried everything. I can't cover everything. So feel free to add to the list down below in the comments. You guys can let me know what limited edition whiskeys you've been enjoying lately. You can tell me what your list would look like, whatever. That might give me something to look out for. I do listen to your recommendations. Also, as always, I've got a mystery pour in my glass here. So make sure you stick around after the list. I'll let you know what that is. And that's it. So let's jump into our list. And in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So we're going to kick things off with an honorable mention. I've got a big brand release here that I don't think got the fanfare it deserved. It's delicious stuff. And it's funny, it was only after I scripted this video that I realized I've actually put this on a previous list, but I don't care. I'm still going to recommend it again because it's still widely available. I'm talking about the Glen Morangy Alta. This one is a 2019 release from their private collection and it's still available. It's still available online. I still see it on the shops here in Taiwan. So I imagine if you want a bottle, it wouldn't be too hard to track down and the price is still fair. It's not overpriced yet. And like I said, as far as I'm concerned, this one is a stunner. It should have been more popular. I actually think this is one of the all time great Glen Morangies. Now, I guess that this is less popular than some of the other releases just because it's not a bells and whistles whiskey. We don't have any kind of like loud cask influence in here. Uh, it does have an interesting yeast concept. You can Google that if you like. But for me, this is just the classic Glen Morangy profile that's been amped up to 51.2%, which really suits it. It's bright, it's clean, it's fruity, it's really delicious, and it's kind of the unsung hero of the Glen Morangy private collection. Check it out if you can. Glen Morangy Alta. All right, moving into our proper list. My number seven is from a big mainstream brand. It's from a corporate big boy. And I think because they're so big, this brand is often dismissed by a lot of people. It shouldn't be. As far as I'm concerned, they have one of the best house styles in the game. The brand is Glenlivet. The whiskey is Licensed Dram. This one is a follow-up to their Illicit Still release, both of which are part of their original stories collection, which get released at 48% ABV. This one was matured in first fill bourbon and first fill sherry casks, and it's a banger. So is Illicit Still, but I actually like this one more than Illicit Still. I think Glenlivet makes amazing whiskey when they choose to, but they don't always choose to, which makes a release like this pretty special. Um, unfortunately for me, this one's kind of overpriced and hyped up right now in Taiwan, but if you're buying it in another market, it should be very fairly priced, so our value is good, and it's a fantastic whiskey. So number seven, Glenlivet Licensed Strand. Next up for number six, we've got a whiskey that I reviewed not too long ago. This is a beauty of a whiskey. It's from a brand that recently reinvented themselves, and I'm a big fan of a lot of the stuff they've been putting out lately. 
I've got the Fitter Karen 16, release number two. First off, I want to correct a mistake that I made when I reviewed this a while back. And actually, it's not really my mistake. It's more the mistake of the Taiwanese distributor. Um, they did not update the back label on this bottle. And the back label says that this is caramel colorant added. Now, the first batch of Fetter Can 16 did have color. This one doesn't. But again, the distributor didn't update the label. So I said that this is a colored whiskey. It isn't. Um, but yeah, again, it's not really my fault. It's kind of my fault, but not really. Kind of. Anyway, we've got Oloroso Sherry and Palo Cortado Sherry at work here, although the Palo Cortado does kind of steal the show. This is a light, bright, clean sherried whiskey. We have some dry nuttiness in here. We have some subtle complexity. It's fantastic. I'd recommend this one or the first release. You're okay with both. Excellent whiskeys. Number six, Better Karen 16. All right, so we're moving into the top five, and I'll be honest, this is where things get real. Every whiskey in the top five has blown my mind, and we're going to start off with a release that was put out to mark this brand's 185th anniversary, and apparently it makes use of whiskey from casks that span across several decades, although we're not too clear about the specifics or the proportions, but we do know there's older whiskey in here. It's a fantastic whiskey. I've got the Glen Farkless 185. This one is rich, it's refined, it's got a nice old school sherry charm to it. It's not cheap, but we do get a lot of the age and the sophistication with this one. It's big sherry, but it's not a sherry bomb. This is more about nuance and complexity. We've also got good specs here, and I don't always get along with Glen Farkless. I'll be honest, they're not my favorite brand, but I do think this one is a real winner. It is a gentleman's whiskey. It's opened up beautifully in the months since I popped it. Again, it's for the old school sherry lovers. It's fantastic stuff. Check it out. Number five, Glen Farkless 185. So for our number four, surprisingly, we've got a Diageo release. And it's rare that I would praise a Diageo release, but I do love this one. I reviewed it a while back. I gave it a great score. This is part of their annual special releases. And no, it is not the Lagavulin 12. I've got the Oban 12. This one is the Oban Distillate on steroids. It's been entirely matured in refill casks. It's very straightforward. It's a beast. And if you're the type of person that's not a huge fan of the 14 year old, maybe you don't like the price. Maybe you don't like the 43% color chill filtration. Maybe you think it's too tame. Listen, that's all fair. Try this one. This whiskey has everything I love about Oban. It's salty. It's maritime. We have that tiny hint of peat and we have all the intensity that you get with 56.2% ABV. Again, it's open with big brass balls. Fair warning, don't let this bottle sit out for too long with too much air. When the bottle gets low, it can go a little bit flat, but at its best, man, this is good stuff. Number four, open 12, fast strength. Next up for number three, we've got another whiskey that I reviewed not too long ago, and I absolutely fell in love with it. That review caused a tiny bit of a stir just because it's such a young whiskey that got such a high score. I can't get enough of this stuff. Bladnuck 11. Now they've put out a few releases of the 11 year old. The one I've got here is from 2021 and it's a beauty. I feel like Bladnuck is showing the world just what Lowland whiskey is capable of being. This is vibrant. It's complex. It's utterly unique. There isn't much out there that you can compare this to, but it's delicious. It's not going to be on every store shelf, but I don't think it's sold out across the board. I checked some online retailers. A lot of them maybe don't have the 2021 anymore, but they do have the 2022. I haven't tried that one, but I am curious myself. But yeah, this is such a unique and characterful whiskey. It's not going to be for everyone. It is a little bit of an oddball, but really good stuff. Worth checking out. Number three, Gladneck 11. All right, for my number two, we've got another whiskey that totally blew me away. This one came out back in 2019. I do think that the availability for this one is starting to thin. It was available from some major online retailers up until recently, but it does seem to be gone now. Hopefully there still are a few bottles out there to be found. I've got the Laphroaig 16. Now, I don't always get along with Laphroaig. Sometimes I find it to be a little bit too loud, a little bit too much of a one trick pony. And of course, it's a good trick. I really do like their style of peat, but I often tend to prefer stuff that's a little bit maybe calmer or more subtle. And that's precisely what this one is. This one is a grown-up Laphroaig. 
and it's everything I hoped it would be. This one is complex, it's calm, it's sophisticated. We have some gentler peat in here. We have some chocolatey notes. It's malty, it's woody, it's balanced. This is probably the most engaging Laphroaig I've had in a really long time, probably since the 18. So check it out. I really do think this is one of the best Laphroaigs I've ever had. I do hope there are some bottles still out there waiting to be found. I highly recommend it. Number two, Laphroaig 16. All right, so we made it to number one. This is a whiskey that I reviewed a while back and I absolutely loved it. I gave it a score of 90 and since then it's actually shot up in my opinion. I'd probably score this one a 92 now. It's fantastic whiskey. It's a peated whiskey. One of the best peated whiskeys I've had in recent memory. I've got the Port Charlotte PAC 2011. This one is a wine cast maturation. I believe it's eight years old. They also have an OLC sherry release out there. It's more expensive. I haven't tried it, but I definitely want to seek it out after trying this one. Uh, this one is really interesting stuff. It's very heavily peated, but it's also got a strong fruity wine cask influence. And despite all that, it still remains a very clean whiskey. Not only is it clean, it's got one of the best noses and one of the best balance of flavors that I've had in a really long time. So yeah, it's a complex, clean peat. This is one that you want to spend time with and explore. I honestly can't say enough good things about this whiskey. It's incredible stuff. Number one, Port Charlotte PAC 2011. All right, that's it guys. That's the list. I hope you enjoyed it. As I said earlier, these kinds of lists are of course going to be incomplete. So feel free to add to it. What are some special edition whiskeys that you guys have been enjoying recently? Maybe you could put your own list down below. I read all of the comments, so please go ahead and share. Now I know some of you guys stuck around to find out what the mystery port in my glass is here and I'm not going to keep you waiting, so what I've got is Highland Park Cast Strength Batch Number 1. Now this is a dirty, untamed, rugged Highland Park. It did take me a while to warm up to it just because it's such a beast, but I love it now. This one is basically Highland Park on steroids, apparently with a batch two, they did round out some of the rougher edges. Um, but yeah, I love this stuff. I think it's fantastic. Like I said, really big, really powerful, really punchy. So if that's your jam, I don't imagine you'll be too disappointed. Also, I think these releases would be relatively easy to track down. I think Highland Park Cast Strength is available in most markets. So yeah, check it out. And I guess that's it for today, guys. So thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. That is always appreciated. And we'll catch you next time.